Map fans, welcome back. Today we're looking at ISRIC soil grids and how we can access them and use them in GIS. This is a bit of an agnostic one. We're looking at ArcPro, ArcMap and QGIS all in one video. Slavian got in touch and wanted to know how he could access the total water content for soil across the globe. And that's what we're looking at at the moment. Now, the ISRIC website has some weirdness to it, and that's what we'll be looking at today. When you download data from the ISRIC website, you get a folder structure that looks like this. In the data folder, you've got a .mdb, which is an access database, or an ESRI personal geo database. In the GIS files folder, you get a .adf, which is an ESRI grid or a raster, and in the interchangeable format folder, you get a bunch of text files. So there's all sorts going on here. At this point, I should mention that there is soilgrids.org. And this looks like version 2.0 for ISRIC. It doesn't seem to be complete yet. So we're going to look at the older version and see how we can wrangle that data into our GIS. <laughs> If we look at the readme from ISRIC, it says that we can use ArcMap and we can access our access database or the MDB, find tables there and join those to our raster using the cell identifier or the grid cell identifier. Now that's okay, but there are a couple of problems. First up, we need to access our access database or the .mdb or the ESRI personal geo database. Next, we need to perform a join on this using a raster attribute table, also known as a RAT. If we look at the software, ArcGIS Pro can work with raster attribute tables. However, as far as I'm aware, there is no support for accessing .mbds. If we look at QGIS, on the other hand, Cube can access MDBs through the ODBC driver, however, it cannot work with RATs. RATs, you might be thinking. However, there is one saving grace. ArcMap can deal with both. Incredible. So, for the rest of this video, we are going to look at how you can work with these in ArcMap. And then I'm going to put together some resources so that if you do need to access this data, you can. And they'll be free to download for you. And I'll show you how to use those too. If you're interested in knowing how to access MDBs through QGIS, do let me know in the comments below and I'll put together a video for that too. Here I am in ArcMap. My goodness, it's been a while. Anyway, this is ArcMap. 10.6 I think and the first thing I'm going to do is add in some data. So here is the file structure and we've got the GIS files, the data and the interchangeable format. For the GIS files I'm just going to go in there and add in this wise 30 second thin. If you add that in you can see we have the whole world on our screen. Marvellous. The next thing that we need to do is to join data from our MDB. ArcMap has native support for MDB, so this should be pretty easy. I'm just going to go to Add Data, and I'll just back out of it to show you this. In the Data folder, we have the MDB here. It looks just like a normal geo database. Double click on that to open it up, and I'm going to add in this HW 30 second full. This is the table that Slavian requested, so that's the one I'm going to be using. You can check the metadata to see what all the other tables mean. I'll add that into our map and it comes in as a no geometry table. Performing the join couldn't be easier. All I need to do is highlight my raster, right click, go to joins and relates and go to join. And I would like to join attributes from a table. I am going to choose the news UID that was in the readme from Idric, if you remember. And I'm going to join the HW30S full to this and I'm going to use news UID. I'll keep all of the records and I'm going to hit OK. Now it's complaining that I don't have an index on this table and it would improve performance if I did have one. I'm not going to have one at the moment. It's going to hit no for that. 
and our join should have occurred. Now how could we check this? We can go up, right click and open up our attribute table. There we can see that we have all the details from our HW30S full table attached to our raster. That is why raster tables can be, or raster attribute tables can be pretty useful. The next thing I'm going to do is export this wise 30 set thin raster to a new data set or a new raster. And that is because it will mean that the joined data is included in that. And what that does for us it just makes things a little bit quicker. So the workspace that we're going to use is a GDB that I've set up here just called Art Map. Uh, let's choose that. Okay. And in terms of the name, I'm going to call it Win or Wise 30 Sec Join. I'll leave all the defaults as they are for now and just save that. With Wise 30 sec join saved into that GDB, I can now use a tool in the reclassification section of Spatial Analyst Tools, and it's called Lookup. So if I go down and use this, open it up, I'm going to use Wise 30 sec join as my input raster, and then for the Lookup field, I am going to choose whatever it is I want. And you can see that from my join field, from my raster attribute table, I can choose any of these at all. I'm going to go for torque, which is the water content. And for my save location, I'm going to use that art map GDB, and I'm going to call this one torque. Now there is a torque underscore STD in that uh, list of values as well. I'll have to have a look at the metadata and see what the difference is between those. But for now, I'm just going to save the talk one. And what this is going to do is it's going to take our raster and for each cell, it's going to replace the value in there with the values from the raster attribute table in the talk column. And there we have it, the water content on a global scale. Now you could choose an area here and clip out your area of interest by all means do do that now i did say at the beginning of the video that i was going to provide some resources so what i'm going to do is put talk and talk std into a geo package and make that available for you so there'll be a link below and if you did find this video helpful then please don't forget to like subscribe Leave a comment below if you've got any questions that you need answering, then do let me know. And again, if you'd like to see the ODBC connection that you can make using QGIS3, by all means, ask for that and I will make a video relating to that as well. Other than that, thanks very much for watching and happy mapping.